Hello my crafty friends, it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos and I'm here with a video that is a little bit sort of making an interactive box card that folds flat when you want to put it in the envelope so let's get to it. So I'm going to start off by bringing on a couple of basic shapes and I'm going to bring on a rectangle and a circle and this kind of um, plaster shape if you will like so. So I'm going to start off by moving those over to the mat and we'll deal with them later. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make the blank, the card blank itself. So I'm going to go on to the properties icon here. I'm going to uncheck the maintain aspect ratio. So I want that tick gone and I need to make it 6.5 inches by 4 no, 5.5, I think it is, 5.5, it might be six and a quarter, just let me check my dimensions, um, I'm on the wrong page in my notes, so I just need to, so 6.25 by five and a half, that's right, so we're going to get rid of that now, so that's giving us the basic sort of shape for the card. So what I'm going to do now is I need to be making some score lines that are an inch and half an inch from either side of that piece of cardstock. Now you can do it by lining it up up here and it's sort of semi um, accurate but me being me has to I have to have it fully accurate or else it'll just drive me insane if the file's not right. So what I'm going to do is just going to put some colour so that I can tell exactly what's on top and what's below. So I'm going to make this one um, 6.25 inches high and 0 0.5 in, oh, 0 0.5 inches wide like so. And if it comes up in the wrong orientation we can just rotate it by 90 degrees and then I'm going to hit D on my keyboard which will duplicate the shape and then I'm going to position, oh it seems to be, I've changed size as well, I've, I've duplicated, oh hear me, let's start that again. So I'm going to just start that bit again, I'm just going to bring on the rectangle and I need to make it 0 0.5 wide by 5, sorry 6.25 inches. 6.25 inches long and that should be that's correct now so you need to put your actually no I don't want it 6.25 I want it 5.5 excuse me my brain's not working today I think I've um I'm suffering at the minute with hair fever and I've not been um on as much as what I would like to have been so And I definitely am allergic to the tree pollen. So I'm just going to rotate that by 90. And that should be the right length now. So now we're good. So we can get rid of that for now. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm dragging it off to the side. So I'm first going to align it to the left. And to the top. You could choose bottom. So now that's set. If we just zoom in a little so you can see. That set that rectangle right on the edge of that card lined up exactly. So you're going to double click to expose the nodes. And we're going to go on this one. And it's going to remove the one that changes to turquoise. So I'm going to highlight that one and hit minus. And then I'm going to highlight this one and hit minus. And that will leave, just let me zoom out a little bit that like so now to get it selected so you're not messing around and moving it if you now hit this icon it will select it automatic then you can go on to properties again go on cutting and perforating you choose your favorite perforating style and then you're going to 
draw around them as though you're drawing a, around the shapes but just catching both of them then going on edit and group so that's how you're going to do that score line so now i'm going to take a duplicate again of that one and i'm going to line it up this time to the right and to the top like so and then i'm going to click off click on the little rectangle double click to expose the nodes i need to get rid of that what not sorry not that one if it does that and it's it's taking the wrong one just un undo and you can just reselect and you select the node by hitting the turquoise and then we need this one here and say minus and that leaves that S click on that icon again and we want to go to cutting line and perforating line click on select everything and group so now we need an inch score so I'm now going to hit D on my keyboard and I'm going to change this to one inch like so and then again we're going to repeat the steps so to the left and to the top click off click on the rectangle twice to expose the nodes and then take away the outer one and the diagonal and this one will give you that line Just click on this icon go on properties cutting line and turn it to a perforating line and then close and then edit and group finally we're going to make this one sorry we're going to make this one one inch wide and we're going to line it up with the and if that's at the back we need it at the top because we need to see what we're doing so I'm just going to raise it to the top select both line it up to the top and to the right and then click off double click to expose the nodes that one we want to save this one click on work out which ones you need to save and which ones you need to leave and we want this one to stay so I'm going to click on this one no it must be this one to get rid of that length there and then minus and then click on this icon here to select the line and then make it a cutting and a perforating line so I'm going to edit and I'm going to group so now that's made the base card okay so the next thing you need to do is I'm just going to take a duplicate of that and move it down to the side <coughs> then what you need to do is bring on the shape that you're going to use and I'll show you how I made the fishbowl although you could just make it a, a circle that you're going to cut out of it or you could use um, an oval any shape you want I'm just going to resize this a little bit till it fits in my aperture I'm just looking at how big I can go with the circle so I think I'm going to go with maintain the aspect ratio and make it 2.75 say ok see how we're fitting no we can go a little bit bigger than that we're going to make it a little bit wider like so and that's a nice shape size for our bowl now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to line it up with the top of the ball or the circle. I'm going to edit and I'm going to centre everything and then I'm going to edit. Before I do this I'm going to take a duplicate of that because I'm going to need that again in a minute. I'm going to select both of those shapes and then I'm going to process the overlap and edit undo. If it does that it means the wrong shapes on top. We need this one to be at the very top. So we'll just repeat that step. If that happens, just undo using the undo arrow and then bring that shape to the top and then click that. That's going to make that for you. Now I'm going to bring in this shape and I'm going to shrink it down and make it so that we can 
make a base for our glass bowl, if you will, for our fish bowl. So when I'm happy with the dimension, and that looks good, I'm going to edit again, line up centrally, and this time I'm going to edit process the overlap and weld. So that's given us the basic shape, and I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to make a copy. So what I want now is I'm going to position this with that now but what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to use this top one i'm going to ungroup everything i know that if that happens and it won't let you ungroup what you need to do is just go on give it a give it a, um, a name so we're going to call it box card and then save it then we can say okay and refresh and it looks like everything's going to disappear, but it'll bring it back to the page you're on because you've saved it. And now it should let you to continue ungrouping that shape because we want everything ungrouped. So we just need to make sure that all of our score lines are ungrouped. So now if I select everything, I can see that they're all ungrouped. Now what I want is the very back one, the back square, and my and I'm going to place this one in the middle. So now I'm just going to select the back one whilst I'm holding my shift key down so that I've just selected that shape with that. And then I'm going to edit center and edit middle. Now that's put that fishbowl in exactly the middle. If you want it closer to the top, by all means make it closer to the top or you can adjust it as you see I'm just going to go with it a little bit higher so that it's not quite at the bottom so then all we need to do is click it again and again and then we're going to say so we've now I'll say explain that again so select the fishbowl shape and the very hold the shift key down and then select the very back rectangle then you're going to go on edit process the overlap and subtract and that punches the hole out now don't worry if your scores have disappeared, they're still there. I'll just show you and then I'll undo so you can see. But if you don't do that step where you ungroup them first, it'll actually weld them back in again when you do the thing possibly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to send that to the very back, which brings our score lines to the top, and then we can edit and group everything again now. So that's what we've got so far. So that will be the front of the card. And if we make this a different colour now, and this one will be the back of the card, if you will. And these concertina lines form, these two lines form like a Z fold, so that you can actually attach both the top piece to the bottom piece, so that when you, when you stick them together, it will push flat and it will fit into a regular sized envelope. So that's where we're up to now. So this is our card so far so if we look at what we've got it seems to have changed the dimension of my card somewhere along the line now if that happens you can just select the aspect it, click that off and we need to make it 6.25 5.5 by 5.5 by 6 0.25 and then say OK like so and then do the same with that one I don't know quite why it's changed the dimensions I certainly haven't intended to change them maybe I've done it by accident so now we're back to where we should be with our fishbowl in the centre okay so now what we're going to do because obviously now because we've changed the size I'm just going to edit undo that for a second so I'm going to try to get this now the same size, which I, which would have been easier if I hadn't messed about with the size. So if this happens, you could always start again, but I'm just going to try to eyeball it into being the right size for that aperture. Because it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as long as it's thereabouts. So I'm just going to finagle the a little bit to make it fit behind. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, like so. So now I'm reasonably happy that that's about the same size. 
maybe could just do to be a little bit wider let's just drag it out a little bit and that seems to be okay so I'm just going to edit and bring it to the front like so and then what I think I'll do so that I know it's perfect because it'll just bug me if it's not I'm just going to make it slightly bigger than the aperture and I'll just edit and ungroup again so I've ungrouped now I can put that one in the middle select the one behind line it up center and vertical push that one up a little bit so that it's overlapping the one behind because I remember I, I raised it up and then edit process the overlap and subtract and again I'm going to just need to make a copy of that or else I'm going to be in the same position so I'm just going to hit D and pull that off to the side then I'm going to select everything no I'm going to select the ball and the one at the back edit and punch it out then I'm just going to click on that one and I'm going to send that to the very back so my scores come back and then I can edit and I can group. So now we've got that as a group. So now we know that fits perfectly behind. So I'm happier now. So this is going to be our back of the card and then we're going to use this to make a um, a border for a round so we can stick a border on it so I'm going to increase I'm going to make a outward offset say okay I'm then going to make this one go inwards just slightly but before I do that I'm going to take a copy of it then I've got one that's the exact same size as that one and then I'm going to bring this one to the top I'll change the colour so you can see it's on the top and then I'm just going to align these two shapes to the middle and to the centre and I'm going to select them again and I'm going to process the overlap and subtract so that, that will make a nice border that you can stick on the front of your card if you will and it should just about fit in between your score lines okay so that's where we're up to now so we've got our nice border for around and this is the shape from behind now what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to edit and i'm going to create an offset and i'm going to go inwards again a little bit say okay and it's this one we're going to use like so and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring on another piece of card oops excuse me um, or rather another basic shape a rectangle or a square whichever doesn't really matter it's an arbitrary one and what I want to do is I'm going to just check the height of my card and if it again this properties is messing about just do a save and say okay and then refresh because that will save all your work up to that point and then that will mean when you go on properties suddenly the dimensions will appear and I can see that that one is 5.52 which would be 5.50 and why does it keep changing the size I've no idea anyway we'll leave it at that so that one is going to be on top that one's going to be behind so I need this one to be the same height as that one so that's got to be 6.25 And I'm just going to make it slightly less so that it doesn't and I'm going to drag that one in that way because I don't want it as tall sorry it's five I don't know why I keep doing six it's 5.4 and six wide right so we're going to go here and we want to make it wide enough to fit behind this one because this is another way if you don't want the frame to be on the outside you can put a frame on the inside which will also give your card some stability so what I'm just doing now is just centering it to make sure it fits behind and it does so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the smaller of the two 
okay and I'm going to select both center them vertically and horizontally and then I'm just going to click off move that up down a little bit the rectangle and I'm just going to try it over my shape so clearly I just need to be a little bit higher with the green so I'm just gonna get that in the middle and I'm gonna select everything and do it that way that'll be easier edit select all I'm gonna center it and put it in the middle and deal with it from there so then I'm just going to Send that backwards one layer because it's not letting me select the fishbowl. Select the green fishbowl. I'm just going to shunt it up with my keys till it's right in the middle. Then I'm going to select the green one and the small rectangle. Edit, process the overlap and subtract. So what I've effectively done now is made a layer far behind. And if I just show you this, if I send that back one layer, what you can do then is just move that one out of the way is you can stick that other piece of card on the inside which will give you an extra bit of stability and also give you that effect of having a matting layer for your card so I'm just going to check where we're up to with the side because I'm sure these are two different sizes now and for some reason canvas keeps changing the sizes and I'm not entirely sure why um, I'm just going to take that back down to 5.5 .5, which is what I want it to be and this one is also going to be 5.5 .5. so now they should both be 5.5 .5 by 6.25 I have no clue why it's doing that it's not me that's doing it it's the machine for some reason it does, that one does still seem to be taller than the other one and I'm not entirely sure they should be exactly the same so let's just line them up centrally and in the middle and maybe just me it does look still look taller let's just check the length of that one again and the length of this one again you know, it says they're identical so we'll have it at that so if it's not and you're not happy you could always just shrink it down a little bit and then it does fit <coughs> so those are your basic parts for your card so this one is the front you can use that one as your matting layer for behind so that you've got that effective looks like you've got a, a border around your fishbowl or you can use this one and add that for your border I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that will go around the opening if I can actually select it instead to give you that sort of border as well so I'm just going to move that out of the way I think that this border could work really well and it also gives you the card stability and it's easier to stick down than using this one but that's an option if you wish so those are your basic parts to the card now I made a file a long time back now with some um for a shark card i believe and i will leave a link to that video in the description box below um but if i just go on my projects and i just scroll down and see if i can find it i'm just going to scroll down until i find the one i'm looking for with the shark the we're near now because that's closely to related. Not all the parts are there at the minute, but that's not quite it. Let's keep going. There it is. So I'll just bring it on so you can see. So that's the part. So what I did is I, I used the file. I didn't do all these again because obviously if you want to watch how to create this file, then you can watch my YouTube channel. So I brought all these embellishments on just from the file that I created for the shark which obviously I'll link below in the description so that you can find it so I just brought on the different types of seaweed so this one that one and that one this the crab the seahorse and the sand dollar 
and this one makes a nice card as well so I don't know if you'd be interested to look at how that one's made but then I just got everything together like so and then all those parts were saved then and sent over I just gave it the name box file so if we just go off and go to my projects again um, or oh, the bubbles how did I do the bubble background that's one thing I've not shown you so I'm just going to move that off to the side so what I did is basically just brought on some basic circle shapes for my bubbles and I made them different sizes so I hit D on my keyboard and I made some of them a bit bigger I'm not going to do this all because you can do this and, and faff around or you could use the one that I've already done I don't mind um, but I just made some really small ones and then I arranged them I just have a really really tiny one let's just zoom in a little bit and you'll get the idea in a minute when I show you what I mean so get that really small and then I just arranged them where I thought they looked okay and then I didn't do any more really much messing around I did a few more little ones and scattered them in between the bigger ones so that we had a bit more and then I selected everything grouped it duplicated it and then arranged it and then duplicated arranged so that they weren't crossing over but I was getting some sort of bubbles and delete duplicate oh, bring it down arranged it duplicate up oh, make it sure they're not touching duplicate up oops move it up and we're aiming for hang on let me just drag that one back down because I've moved it as well so all I did was just kept on doing this until I was happy and then you can always edit and flip it if you want it to fit in a different area I could flip this one edit and flip this is all I did to make the background is I just carried on like that let's do a duplicate of that one slot that one in there until I was happy with the file so then I ungrouped one of them like so I know I'm doing more than I said I was going to do and then I just filled in with some of the smaller bubbles and obviously you can make carry on with this as much as you want or as little as you want I'm going to delete that one until I got them um, where I wanted them and then I'll just zoom back out for you fit to mat and all I did then was select everything edit and group it I made it a drawing file so I went on here and made it draw and then I shrank it down and obviously I put some more bubbles up here so it was roughly a rectangle and then all I did was bring it on to this piece and bear in mind that because the bubble obviously like I said I did um, you could actually shrink it down a bit more I think I did and then duplicate it again hit D and then I kind of flip that one over and just arrange them and you just play around with it until you're happy with the file basically so that's all you did and then obviously because I've got this one that's slightly higher than my other one if you will I looked at that positioned my bubbles where they'd look pleasing Oops. in the window of my card you can rotate it to suit the, the, the aperture that you've got and all I did then was once I was happy with where they were is clicked on it made it a drawing line made sure of that and then I didn't group it because I want that to be independently drawn and that cut so I, when I did my card and loaded it onto my mat I put that one on first this colour chose what colour and I used white for mine and I got my um, scan and cut to draw it using the really fine liners but padded it out with um, masking tape and I did it in a light pale grey colour and then 
when I was assembling the card, I went round the circles with a gel pen. You could have done that on the scan and cut as well, but I wanted a clear um, sparkle gel on top. So I could have sent the, the, the drawing file round again and got it to draw exactly, but I didn't think at the time, so I just did that by hand. So that's how you create your bubble background. And incidentally, that could also, just while I'm on this bit, I might as well sh um, show you. If you've got a piece of mylar, there's nothing stopping you from making that into a stencil. So you'd send that to the back. Select, all I've done is bring down a rectangle, sent it to the back by going edit and sending it to the back. You select everything, edit, center, edit, middle, and this is another way that you could create that bubble background if you wanted to. So I'll just make a, so I've got that selected, make a duplicate of that to include on the file. I'm going to select both, edit and subtract. So that's cut all the bubbles out of there. And if we put flood that with colour, you'll see that we've now got a stencil that you could cut out of mylar or card and use a dusting brush to get the bubble effect. So there's lots of things. I'm going to just delete some of these off now so that we're not cluttering up the space. So we've got the base card and the score lines done. We've got the inside part to st stabilise your card, make it a bit stronger and also come create that sort of border edge around. We've got a crab that you can use for, I did different size of seaweed i just resized them to suit this project so that they weren't going to be massive so i just clicked on and resized as as desired before i actually sent it across to the cut so everything looks in proportion for what we're doing so i just did this and sort of arranged it roughly so i could see what was going where did my shelf in the bottom and again it's a little bit big so i made it a little bit smaller made my seahorse shot smaller and so on just resize the beauty of the scan and cut that you can do all these things so i kind of roughly planned it out and thought about and the the actual um stamps were the, the actual fish themselves were a stamp so um obviously i'm sure you've either got stamps or you could do an alternative theme so that's today's pop out card i hope you've enjoyed the video i'll leave links to the file for making these um, on the comments below and remember that this file and the one previous that made with the seahorse and the seaweed is available free to download on my blog which is beverly10.blogspot um, again I shall try to remember to leave a link to my blog in the comments box below so remember to click the down arrow underneath the video for the information about the actual file itself and where you can find it etc so I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you have a lot of fun making this I know I did I really enjoyed the process and it's been quite um, satisfying watching the card come together so I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please like share and subscribe and remember tell your friends where to find me and I'll see you in my next video thanks for watching bye